Hey, welcome back to Gun Stuff. This week we had a chance to get Bowden Tactical in on the show. So they came in, they showed us a bunch of the products. We have a, uh, one of their muzzle brakes right here, but they left a bunch of products with us. So we're gonna go up and take a look at them. We're gonna put them on the guns. We're gonna test them out and give you guys just a preview of what they offer. All right, so let's take a look at all the goodies that they left us uh, to get on the show here and to, uh, to do a little review on. So starting off with the compensators, they left uh, several different compensators for us to try out. Uh, of course, these are going to help with uh, muzzle rise and recoil mitigation, but they have a couple different models here. So this is what we're going to start off with today. You've got uh, uh, 308 models and 556, and you've got a couple different uh, bigger open chambers, a little bit heavier if you're wanting to go with a little bit heavier uh, bolt or action or something like that, or a heavier load, you want, to, you want a little bit more weight on it. Uh, they have their birdcage model. The, so this is to emulate and look like a regular birdcage, but what they've done is they've added a bunch of uh, smaller holes in here, so you don't have the you won't have the signature uh, burst that comes up. It'll actually be cut down into smaller smaller bursts of fire that shoot up out of this. So uh, as it comes to a flash break or shooting something at night. We won't really necessarily be able to get a chance to test these today because we're shooting in daylight. Uh, this is something that's best tested at night so you get really get a, a true appreciation for how much of the signature it reduces. But of course these come in 5.56 and 308. And then one of the ones that we're going to be doing a little comparison with is the muzzle brakes but then also your blast cans. So blast cans are a, a, a popular item nowadays because of the proliferation of pistol braces, uh, forearm braces, that people are starting to build shorter, shorter barreled rifles and or pistols so that uh, you can be a little more maneuverable, be a little bit lighter, be able to uh, conceal the weapon in your, you know, underneath your seats or wherever in your truck and things like that. So all the reasons that people want pistol caliber carbines. So, but one of the big, big problems you have with that is when you start to shoot, a shorter barrel, you, you still have the higher pressure rounds and things like that. Uh, there's still going to be a lot more gunpowder going uh, coming out of the barrel, and it's still going to be uh, burning and detonating outside of the barrel because the it's it's meant to be burned within a 16 inch barrel or a 14 and a half inch barrel, whatever that is. So one of the things that you'll see, and what we'll demonstrate here in a minute, is how that blast over pressure can damage uh, people, can hurt your ears, can uh, burn things, stuff like that. But then what this what this steps in and does is on all those short barrel uh, pistol caliber builds that everyone's do, that, that everyone likes so much. This blast dire directs the blast straight forward. So if someone is beside you, or if you're shooting in a confined area, this blast is. Of course, this is hollow. This isn't for any type of sound mitigation. But what it is, is it's for the, the flame and the overpressure that comes out of the round. So the big bang that you hear and the fire that comes out, this is to direct all that downrange. It doesn't decrease really much in the sound. It may decrease a little bit in the sound at the shooter's ear because it's directing the blast forward, but it doesn't re reduce the sound signature. So what we're going to do is we've got our compensator on the, on the, on the rifle now. We're doing this one because it's just an easy just swap out with a, with a regular wrench. All it takes is just a typical adjustable wrench that just about everybody has or just everybody has access to at least. Uh, we just took that off, put this one on. We'll run this real quick. We'll do a demonstration then we'll put the uh, blast can on and we'll show the difference. All right, so here we are downrange. Uh, what we have here is we have a balloon. We have a couple balloons and we, and we want to show the difference between what the compensator does and versus the blast can and, and be able to show off their products a little bit. Uh, this of course is going to be for your target shooting. You're, you're looking for, to hop up your rifle to get it to perform to the best it can for accuracy, right? You want this to have as little recoil as possible. It has the ports on the top that are going to keep the recoil mitigation down, stuff like that. So this is going to be more for a target type pistol or something that you're wanting uh, extreme accuracy with. Uh, but what we want to show the difference on is, is the fact that because these uh, blast chambers divert everything out to the side and the top, if you're using this also for your home defense weapon, which is the overwhelming majority majority of everyone I know that owns an AR, this is going to be their go-to uh, home defense, shit hit the fan, whatever. Uh, this is going to be their go-to gun because this is this is by far the uh, the most popular firearm in, in, in all of history. So uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and give a little demonstration. So th what this represents is this represents a 
a family member or something that you don't want to injure. You're in some type of defensive situation and you're clearing your house and your kids are in your house or your family member or this is your truck gun and you get it out and you're you're moving your family and you have to engage. So one of the things that we want to demonstrate is just exactly uh, how these things work on these. So this, this balloon actually uh, is somewhat similar to your ears, stuff like that. You know, you got you you got your inner ear and everything that you can you can rupture someone's eardrum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire one shot in close proximity. So if I'm clearing my house and I'm moving my family and then someone comes in that way and I have to take a shot, this is this is kind of what you could run into. So I'm going hot, fire. Okay. So very clear, very visual demonstration. Me just leaning out, say this is my, my wife, my kids, whatever, and someone's coming in through the back door and I have to lean out and take a shot. They just ate every bit of that concussion and that force uh, from this round. And these rounds are very high pressure. Extremely lethal, of course, because that's what they're designed to do. But that's the difference. So now we're going to go back, we're going to put the blast can on, and we'll do the demonstration on the other side. So we're back down here uh, at the target again. What I've done is put the blast can on, and of course this blast can is going to divert the gases and the flame and concussion and everything downrange. So one of the, one of the things that we want to demonstrate here is, is how that works, but also one of the advantages of this as well is that on the compensators, bird cages, things like that, you have a crush washer that goes on here uh, so that you always have to clock those in a certain orientation so that they're diverting the gases in the right way or they're not blowing them down. You need to make sure that those those ports are facing in the right orientation. With the blast uh, with the blast can on here, you really just screw it on, snug it down, and it doesn't have to be clocked in any certain orientation. All right, so we're going to go ahead and around. Okay, again, this is uh, simulating a loved one or whatever, and you have to engage or around in or around them. All right, so as you can see, with this, uh, I just fired four or five rounds. At one point, the balloon was actually touching the blast can itself when it went off, and I expected it to pop, but it didn't. So uh, as the, with this representing, say, uh, inner ear or something like that, uh, you, you, having to rupture the inner ear of a loved one or a team member or anything else as you go around one as, as you're trying to engage the threat around you're trying to protect them but you still end up injuring them so this is a great thing especially when it comes to your shorter uh your shorter barrels on on the pistol mods or if you're going sbr but this is a this is a great uh this is a great piece of kit and it makes a big difference and it made a bit of a difference to me as well even though i have my my ears on my electronic ears uh the concussion that comes back from off of the target and off of surfaces, all these all these uh, things go out. You know, your the vibration goes out, bounces off walls, bounces off all these other things. You can actually do this to yourself as well. So if you're shooting a compensator and you come around an obstacle and there's a brick wall right here, if I come up and this is a brick wall, that concussion is going to come back, especially if it's angled at me anyway. If this wall is a 45 is off to the 45 or anything, all that concussion is going to come off, hit that wall, it's going to come right back in my face. And those of you that have shot on uh, ranges where they have the metal baffling over the top you see that they're so much louder if you're shooting in the ranges where they have the the metal uh, walls in between the hard the hard cover in between the shooting lanes you can feel all that reverberation and all that uh, blast coming back at you so this is one of the great things that helps mitigate that uh, only thing is is it, it it since it pushes back you it this will actually uh, re increase recoil but on a 5.56 and, a, and a, a pistol or something like that, a pistol build, not gonna bother me. I, I, I like to run them on my 300 blacks if I'm not running a suppressor or something like that because the blast over pressure is more distracting than uh, the little bit of extra recoil that you get. And, there, and it's not something you can really feel until you pay attention to it. So we're gonna go ahead and step back up to the table. We're gonna throw some more mods on here and we're gonna uh, bring them down and demonstrate for you. All right, so that was a really good demonstration on the blast can. Uh, a must-have piece of kit if you're going to be doing uh, using your the particular weapon for uh, self-defense or you know home defense or anything like that. Or so any or if you're going to be operating as a team or with other people, if you're on a attack team or if you're whatever. So it's just a lot of a lot of good stuff uh, uh, coming out of that. So one of their other things is they got their uh, AR, AR Architect line 
they have their hand guards here. And of course, you got all your, this is all American made, uh, American aluminum, steel, all this stuff. But the, the, these are really high quality pieces and uh, they're reasonably priced for you to be able to put these onto your gun without jacking up the price of your weapon. We buy the gun, then you turn around and you want to make modifications to it. You want to change out plastic hand guards, things like that. I always like to run aluminum or steel whenever I can, uh, but a lot of times that's just, you know, with grips and stuff like that, it's just something that's not really all that attainable sometimes. But these are these are fairly lightweight. Uh, one of the things I really do like is their, their barrel, uh, the barrel, uh, lug setup so this screws onto the end here and then you can do it with a regular wrench flat you're no matter where it's at you don't have to clock it and they also have a patented uh, locking system that will lock around these two rings now it's not necessarily on this one here but they also make a whole line so you can get on you can design your own hand guards and they will do it all the way down to uh, batches of 50 but they brought out one of them last week and it was such a lightweight that had a, a, a bit of a chevron design in it and some honeycomb stuff in there and it was so light that it was almost as light as my carbon fiber uh, grip that I have on here so I mean it's one of those deals where you can go you can go really light for for really inexpensive and I do prefer to run uh, metal anytime I can versus plastics or or carbon fibers and stuff Stuff like that because when they break they can when they like carbon fiber when it breaks it can splinter it's very hard to break of course but uh plastics when they when when they break they can crack things like that these can usually bend and if you're in a pinch you can take this and you can jam it between something like a a bumper of a car or a signpost or something and you can bend metal parts back you know so uh i, I know a lot of guys been out on uh, teams and ops and things like that come around had you know something hit something fall whatever hit their hit their rifle and then you can just take this and you can just bend this sucker you know uh, torque it back to where you want but uh it comes with the M lock rails all the way around has all the lightning holes on here but the ar architect is a good line for you to be able to start your build so one of the other things we want to look at right now is our is our foregrip so this is a foregrip that i typically run this is a bcm uh, gunfighter grip uh, it's designed to go on M lock, so I'm trying to run these so that they attach directly to uh, the the guard itself, and it the, and it doesn't have to have Picatinny rail or anything like that. So I really like these because they're because it eliminates another piece that you don't have to bolt onto the bottom of your rifle. But when you go to look at these, uh, this is an extremely light fore end. It's an extremely light piece of plastic, but. Uh, even with this being as light as it is, one of the things we want to show you is that they are, they have their line of foregrips as well. So you have just the regular finger stop, uh, and this is designed to go onto the bottom of the go onto the bottom of the foregrip here. And this this is going to give you something to grab a hold of, so that you can lock your so you can lock in and get, you can get that proper hand position every single time that you come up to shoot. And then you also have the angled foregrip on here as well. So the angled foregrips is basically the workaround uh, on these is that everyone wants to put these on their guns if they're going shorter barrel, if they're going pistol, because the the regulations on short barrel rifles and pistols is uh, are on, on pistol builds is that you can't put a vertical foregrip. Now this is a full length barrel, so I could put this on here, but you can't normally run a vertical foregrip on a short barrel. So the workaround on that is that people like to put the angle foregrip so that as you hold onto this, you can pull back into your into your shoulder and this gives you all the stability of a foregrip. Now this is aluminum. I know that you, there's, this is, there's a lot of different designs out there, but this thing is going to last a heck of a lot longer than a lot of the plastic ones that you see on the market. And then when you want to go ultra light, you run with it, you run with your finger stop so that it goes on here and then you put it right on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on the scale for you so that we can see the difference. All right, there's our plastic coming in at 1.7 ounces. And here's our aluminum coming in <laughs> uh, point, 0 0.6 ounces. So a whole ounce less. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and weigh our angled foregrip. That's coming in at 2.9 ounces. So this is gonna be a little bit heavier, but a little, even though it's a little bit heavier, this is gonna be far uh, more, far more durable 
than uh, any plastic piece that you're going to be able to put on there. Plastic piece most likely is going to, you can snap off under pressure, things like that. This thing is going to be able to take a solid hit. And with the stop on there, when you come up to an obstacle and you want to take a shot, you come up and you jam. You know, a lot of training, we, we jam our firearms into the obstacle to get stabilization. So we're going to go ahead and install this piece here just to show you how the M lock and uh, the ease of use on here. So we're going to line these pieces up. It's like this. I'm going to put them in, slide them into our M lock rail sections, just like that. Take our wrench, go ahead and tighten them down. Okay, it's a lot easier when my bit stays in piece. But so with this thing being locked on here, this is going to be a far superior. Uh, piece to a plastic uh, hand, a, a plastic grip or anything like that. This is really going to hold it on uh, nice and tight and this is going to be able to take some real abuse. Alright, next thing we like to show you is their trigger. So this is all American made, comes in a one piece unit so this is uh, as about as easy as it gets. Uh, when it comes to triggers, uh, this is probably the best mod that you can make to your gun. You can take a stock trigger, it can be, they can be gritty and it, if they're, you know, most of them are uh, nowadays are all mil spec and even, you know, mil spec, it just means that it's going to survive a beating, right? But it doesn't mean that it's going to be a smooth quality piece. It doesn't mean that it's going to be consistent. And that's the kind of stuff that you need for, uh, for accuracy. So the very first upgrade that I would suggest with every single person that's wanting to improve the handling and the accuracy of their of their AR is to invest in a trigger. So these retail for right around 120, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it may be part of their AR Architect line. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over the standard trigger here. This is a this is a uh, stock AR trigger, uh, mil spec. Uh, it, I'm not 100% sure if it had it has an aftermarket uh, lightning spring in, it, so it may be a little lighter than a uh, normal uh, AR trigger, but we're gonna go ahead and measure it real quick. We got our, uh, we've got an old school RCBS trigger gauge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into fire mode. I've already cleared the firearm. We're gonna go and put it on here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this and we'll see just what our trigger break is. So I'm already at 72 ounces. I'm, so I've already went all the way through this. So this, uh, this, this is about four pounds is, is this scale. So I'm guessing this is probably around five pounds or so. But one of the things we want to show you guys real quick before we get any further is just old school way to measure. Uh, if you don't have trigger gauges or if you do, if this isn't something that you want to do on a regular basis, we're going to show you an old school way and, and a home way to measure your trigger pull on any firearm. So what we're going to get is we're going to take our scale we're gonna get some water. I'm gonna step right here and grab some water. And an old milk jug and a coat hanger. So essentially what we're going to do is if we're, we're going to take this, we're gonna hang it on our trigger and we're going to put the milk jug on the end here. We'll just set it on, on, on a table and you fill the milk jug with water until the trigger breaks. So once the trigger breaks, then you just take the hanger and the milk jug and you set it on the scale. And then that tells you what your trigger pull is. So I'll go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and make sure it's on fire, it's cycled. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hold of this. See if I can do this without spilling. All right, so I'm just gonna fill this thing until it, until it breaks. Man, holy sm <laughs> There we go. All right. So you can, you can see just how much water pulls. It's pretty much a full milk jug of water here. But now it, the trigger broke, so all we do is we pull this water off here. I spilled just a little bit. Go ahead and take your, you know, you want to make sure you don't forget the weight of the, the rod it's, or the close, close hanger itself. I'm going to set it on here and my trigger pull is now at 
six pounds, 10 ounces. So it does have a few lightning springs in there, uh, you know, it, because our guns get tinkered with so much on the show and we change pieces out just like we have today. Uh, but this obviously has some kind of lightning spring because the average breaks around breaks around eight pounds on a, a mil spec air. So this has, looks like it's had a two pound lightning spring. But what we're gonna show is the difference between this that's already had an additional spring pack added to it and this, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and move all this stuff out of the way and we'll go ahead and install that trigger and then we'll weigh it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to install this trigger real quick and then we'll go ahead and measure it. So you're gonna go ahead, clear the weapon, break it down. Now on this gun here, because I have the ambidextrous uh, safety on here, I have one extra step and I'm just gonna have to go ahead and take off this side cover or side lever here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. So this is an extra step that most ARs don't have. So I'm just gonna pull that there, set it down. Now that exposes my safety selector. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this upside down. Push it back in, turn this upside down, change out my heads. So this one's gonna require to take the grip off. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove my grip. Now there is a spring underneath here. Uh, this is where most of us usually forget and we have that spring go flying off. And uh, when, anytime I'm working on my guns, when I get to look up stuff on the internet, I'm not looking for the exact perfect way to do it. I'm looking to see where someone screws up so I learn from that mistake. So uh, this is off now, so I'm just gonna slowly pull this up. I'm just gonna work it up nice and slow till I can see the spring. Spring over here on the weak side. So as you can see, I'm pulling this off. Spring's coming out. Yeah, I'm going to set that down there. Now that allows me, you got, a, you got the follower in there too, uh, that may come down. So I'll, now I just have to pull this piece out of the way and the trigger will drop in. And of course I have to remove the original trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Push this pin out. Let that pop out, hammer. Now I'm going to take the trigger out itself, push the pin out, and I'm just using a standard Glock tool. So there is the trigger. You're retaining these two pins here to place the trigger pack in. So now this is all broke down. You can just take the trigger pack, drop it right in. You just line up the two holes here. Push it in, now you're ready to begin reassembly of the pistol. So I'll go ahead and insert my safety selector. Put the follower in. And here with the, the again, this little uh, spring right here is gonna land right on that follower. For your detent, so push, go ahead and push that in. Drop my screw in there. And I'm working under a tree, so I got quite a bit of shade in here, so I'm trying to see down inside of here. So and screw my grip back on. Okay, get my little pin back out of there. Now I'm going to put on the safety selector back in position. If I can get my screwdriver to cooperate. Tighten this back down. All right, so now we're good to go. New triggers in. First thing you want to do whenever installing new parts is you always want to do your function check. So go ahead and drop the uh, back out, reassemble it. So you're going to go through your function check, weapon on, weapon on fire, charge it, make sure it's charged. You're going to pull the trigger. You're going to work the action. You're going to let out on the, uh, keeping pressure on here. Then you're going to let out on it. You're going to listen for a clunk. That means that it's resetting. You're going to pull the trigger charge it again and then you're going to pull the trigger so you do that a couple times so you're going to do it with the safety on now that i'm going to go ahead and charge it 
put the safety on, pull the trigger, does not does not fire. Okay, so then I'm gonna let it off again, pull it. So basically you want to make sure that one it resets, two, that it the safety engages the way it's properly supposed to. So now we'll go ahead and get this thing charged back up. Now we'll go ahead and put our trigger gauge on here. And we'll see what kind of pressures are changed. All right, ready? Okay, so we're right at 56 ounces. All right, so just a little over three and a half pounds. So that is a very, very big improvement. So when you're trying to shoot this gun fast, one, you want the consistency. So you get the consistency of where this thing breaks every time and you're getting the uh, the the really quick reset and you're also getting the, the the standard break on here so it's not coming in with this gritty uh almost seven pound trigger here six and six a little over six and a half pound trigger or whatever so there's a lot of things you can do to these uh you can you can polish them you can add light lightweight spring packs things like that uh, but the bottom line is you're still investing a considerable amount of time and energy into a stock trigger when you can just order something that's already engineered and custom made to work this way so this is by far one of the best upgrades that i would say uh, a new shooter can add to their rifle so let me put my stuff away here real quick and then we'll go ahead and get down there and test fire it all right let's see what this three and a half pound trigger feels like <laughs> nice so this really gets it uh this really brings it into that that range of just being able to think about the gun going off and the gun going off so we know we like it here and we hope you do too we'll see you next time at gun stuff <laughs>